So let's talk about oblique sections a little bit. Um, so how did we get here? So we started talking about uniaxial load, and then we talked about shear forces or shear stresses, and 90 degrees to that. And one is normal to the cross section, and one is uh, parallel to the cross section. But what both of these have in common is that they are in line with our absolutely arbitrary uh, axis or orientation that we've chosen, our x, y uh, orientation, if you will. Uh, and, and that is arbitrary. We, we could have chosen that to be off angle or, or 90 degrees or 30 degrees uh, in a different direction. And, and so it behooves us to have a look and see what's going on at an angle different from the orientation that we are naturally looking at, the, you know, the direct x or y direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our uniaxially loaded bar uh, shown on this slide and we're going to start to change it or move the orientation. So it's loaded with P here and of course the orientation in the area that we've been looking at for normal stresses associated with this uh, would be the point C shown up here on the plane MN. But what we want to do in this case is we want to imagine what this would look like if we changed our orientation. We're going to move our orientation uh, a, an angle theta counterclockwise from the x or the y axis, it doesn't matter, and look at a different plane. In this case, the plane is shown here on the diagram as the plane PQ or the point D. Uh, and that's where we're going to look at our stresses. So here we have it. I've chopped it. I, I've done my method of sections for the orientation that we're looking at. And of course, what we have is we have a bunch of normal stresses, or we expect that we have a bunch of normal stresses all oriented with the X direction. And they re represent a force, an internal force, uh, N, normal force, if you will. But we know that that's equal to P uh, because of uh, equilibrium. And so let's focus on that P, right? So, so we have our, our normal force P, but what we want to do is to break it into its components that are now normal to the new cross section and parallel uh, to that new cross section. And so we have to rotate it through theta and we get a, a normal force N is equal to P cos theta and our shear force to this new plane or new orientation is equal to uh, P sine theta. Now that, that's fairly straightforward, straight vectors, components of force, but what other step we have to do is we have to consider the fact that when we changed our orientation theta, we actually changed our cross-sectional area as well. So if you look at the length of the line PQ, it's considerably longer than the, the, the length of the line MN. And so what we need to do is we have to figure out in terms of theta, what our new area is as well. And so we, we can show that it, it's a fairly straightforward geometric uh, relationship that our new area, A sub theta, is equal to our original area, cross-sectional area, divided by cos theta. So now we can take these two and we can figure out what our normal stresses and shear stresses are on this oblique plane uh, caused by this uniaxial force P. And so we change our, we have our orientation. We know that we're going to have a normal stress. We know that we're going to have a shear stress because we have a normal force N. We have a shear force V. Uh, and we can calculate those by dividing through by our new area, A sub theta. And we get these two relationships, one for sigma theta and one for tau theta. So our normal stress at a different orientation, angle theta, is equal to P cos squared theta divided by A, that's the original area, or tau theta is equal to the negative of P cos theta sine theta divided by that original area A. So, so what's that telling us? So, so it is an interesting observation, and, and I don't know if you've tweaked on it yet, is that in this same uniaxial bar where we looked at it, we says, oh, the only thing we have is normal stresses pulling on it in one direction. But that's in accordance with that orientation of thinking, which is an arbitrary axis, uh, uh, 
that, that we chose. Internal to that, there are shear stresses occurring just in a different orientation uh, than what we've defined it. And so if you changed your orientation, you would have a combination of normal stress and shear stress that equates to the same condition uh, that we had on the other orientation. So what does that mean to us? Well, if a shear strength is less than the normal strength of a particular material, and that's fairly common for uh, ductile materials like mild steel, it is possible for the material to fail in shear, even though it is subjected purely to an axial load, because at some other angle of orientation, there is a shear stress occurring. So it behooves us to look and see what that shear stress might be, ideally figure out where it is a maximum and what it is when it is a maximum, and make sure that that's below the capacity of the material to support it. And so it can be demonstrated, and I show it up here, is that the maximum normal stress occurs uh, at our original orientation, uh, k equals zero degrees, and we know it's equal to p over a. And at that point in this uniaxial bar, uh, we have no shear stress. Shear stress at theta equals zero degrees is equal to zero. Uh, however, if we turn our orientation theta equals 45 degrees, at that point, we will get a maximum shear stress. Uh, and tau max at that will be equal to our uniaxially applied load P divided by two times the area. It's also worth noting that the normal stress at that same orientation of 45 degrees is got, has the same magnitude as the maximum shear stress, P divided by 2A. Uh, 